Just because we like it doesn't mean we have to possess it. And that way of thinking helped me so much. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I film videos on minimalism and intentional living and just working towards a more mindful, self-aware life. So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today a few tips to hopefully help you guys let go, declutter, easier and faster. So this one is my favorite and it is when you are decluttering something or when you're questioning if you wanna declutter it or let it go, remove it from the space completely. I did it with several pieces in my home, plants, furniture, rugs, TVs, anything that I'm like, do I wanna have this in my home or, you know, really just like stressing over if I wanna let it go or not. And what this does is when you remove the item from the space and you start picturing the space without the item, then a lot of times, well, first of all, it will lead to decluttering out the piece of furniture. So if you're doing it with a dresser, for instance, you're going to start decluttering out the clothes because you have to remove all the clothes from the dresser. But what this does is it starts to get you into the mindset of having less things in your home. So what I found when I did this is I actually preferred the space without the item in it. So for example, when I removed the dresser from my room to see if I really wanted to get rid of it, I preferred it so much better. It looked so much more open and I preferred not having a dresser. And so that told me I can let it go. Go through every single item in your house. And this sounds overwhelming, but what I mean by this is not to overlook anything. So a lot of times when we get used to just having something in our house, a piece of furniture, anything really, you kind of just walk past it and you don't really think about it. And you know, we get used to having the big china cabinet with all the stuff in it, but like, are we going through every little corner of our home? Go through every closet, you know, in your car, every drawer, every piece of furniture, anything that is holding onto stuff. Don't overlook something just because you're used to having it there. Just because you like the item doesn't mean you have to keep it. And this one took me a little bit to get, and I was like, I mean, if you like it, why don't you want to keep it then? But the thing with this is that just because we like it doesn't mean we have to possess it. And that way of thinking helped me so much because let's say even when you're shopping in a store, just because I like it doesn't mean I have to have it. I can say I like it, but I don't have to possess it. Just because I have this thing in my home doesn't mean I have to keep it. Is it completely essential to my life? And that's the question that we need to ask ourselves and know that just because we like it doesn't mean we have to possess it. So there are several different ways that you can start decluttering and starting your decluttering process. Um, but I do like starting room by room. So what this does is it builds up your motivation. So let's say you clear out your kitchen and your kitchen is feeling freer and lighter and more airy. You're like, this feels good, I wanna keep going. That's what that will do. And so if you build up that momentum and simplify each room as you go, you will continue on to the next room because you will feel that motivation to keep going. If there is anything in your home that is taking up a lot of space or is causing stress or something that you don't really want to store anymore, see if you can possibly do it in a different way that takes up less space. So an example of this would be, I had baby books for each of my kids. And basically it's like a book that you, if you don't have kiddos, um, you can put like information over each like milestone in their life. So like for birthdays or when they were born or stuff like that. And these books are pretty bulky, especially when you have several kids. And um, what I do instead, instead of having baby books, is I write journals now. And so each of my kids have an individual journal and I write things that they're doing that I'm proud of them for and simply just to tell them I love them. And what I plan to do with these journals is to give these journals to them when they grow up. And they'll have these little journals that came from mommy. And the journals are pretty small, and so I can have several journals sitting in my closet, and it takes up a lot less space than a baby book, and I think it's way more meaningful. Sometimes it helps to start with visual clutter as well. So our homes can, a lot of times, you know, we can have things stored in closets and in drawers and in cabinets, but the stuff that we really see and the stuff that really takes a toll on our mental state is the visual clutter. So you walk into a room and there's, you know, paperwork on the countertops and there's 
you know, decor on every wall in your home and there's toys everywhere and it's messy, that stuff wears on us after a while. And so starting with the visual clutter, getting your home completely simplified so when you come home and it's, it's peaceful and it's easy to pick up and there's not stuff just like, feels like the walls are closing in, that will motivate you to keep going. And so of course you can donate or sell your items. Um, I think that a lot of times I've heard that people will hold on to items and store them in their closets or storage units in hopes that it will sell. And if you want to hold on to something in hopes that it's going to sell, then you know, do it if it doesn't stress you out or anything. But holding on to this stuff for months and years, it's it gives us mental clutter. It just does. And it doesn't matter if it's sitting stored away in a closet and you don't really see it often. When you open up that closet and you have that box there just staring at you and you're like, why hasn't that sold yet? It feels so good to just let it go if it hasn't sold. A tip to help with this situation would be to set yourself a time limit and a price limit. For instance, if your price limit is it has to sell for $20 and it has to sell within a week, then you know if something doesn't sell for $20 and it doesn't sell within a week, then you can let go of it. And encourage yourself to be consuming any material you're consuming, anything that you're listening to on social media, on YouTube, podcasts, have it be stuff that is motivating you to be where you want to be and to get you on track to a more simplified and minimalist approach to life and to your home. I want to leave this last note on give yourself some grace. Um, a lot of us did not acquire the stuff in our homes overnight. For most of us, it took years and maybe decades for some of us. I'm coming on here with tips five and a half years after I started my journey and I'm still learning. Every day I learn different things. I think it's important to give ourselves some grace and know that it's gonna take time to go through everything in our homes, everything in our minds. That's the thing is for me, minimalism, it was like a snowball effect for me. It started with decluttering and then it went into my mind and decluttering out the closets in my mind and things that I needed to let go of and rewiring my mind and reprogramming myself and knowing that like, you know, understanding this whole process of letting go and keeping things. And there's a balance of not letting go of too much and not keeping too much. And there's a balance of what do I want to hold my emotional attachments to? You know, letting go of emotional attachments. There's so many things that come up when on your minimalism journey. But just remember to give yourself some grace and, you know, it's all a learning process. Feel free to share in the comments below if there's any tips that you have that could maybe help us as well. Until next time, take care.